five begins in this eight round a heavyweight affair to kick off Global Legacy of Fight Night. And boy, if you thought this was going to be a, a victory lap for Dylan Carmen after winning the Canadian, the Canadian heavyweight title, uh, it is certainly not that. He is most definitely in a fight tonight against Benito Quiroz. He's definitely in a fight tonight, Corey. And uh, what he needs to do is start getting busier, busier, busier. The fight, he's already established himself. He's got the rust, the time off that he needed to get off. So now it's time for him to go forward and start letting his hands go. I think one of the issues that we're seeing here, Troy, is that when Carmen isn't actually throwing the jab out there, when he's just holding his arm out there, Kiros is still able to just walk through it. He's not giving him any detriment uh, or any reason not to just walk in and get right on his chest and bang away. Well, what Kiros actually sees from Dylan is that Dylan's throwing one punch combos. He needs to start adding more punches to his repertoire. Put more punches together. Not just one. There was a nice one a moment ago, a left uppercut. Kind of an up jab from Dylan Carmen. We haven't seen that yet. <laughs> Quick uppercut on the inside from Carmen once again. probably been the most successful shot for him thus far tonight. That right uppercut, left hook to the body as well. It is working, but he needs to put more of it together. But like I said, Corey, what I would like to see from Dylan is actually him popping that jab and staying, give himself a little bit more distance. The punches will look more effective and they will land more clean, a lot cleaner, if he was able to just get a little bit more distance in between him and Ki Kiros. And to your point, Troy, uh, about Carmen and his activity level so far, especially when they get on the inside, it's Kiros who looks like he has a little bit more urgency on his offense right now. He's fighting like the guy who knows he's in his opponent's home country and he needs to do a little bit more. That's right. Well, the one thing that makes everything even, even as a smaller fighter is when you get closer, the fight game is exactly the same. That's been the geography uh, thus far, thanks to Benito Quiroz. We take a look at his corner. Still has not taken a seat on the stool yet. Take a look at some of the action from round five. Here's Dylan taking his time. We're looking for the the, bet, the proper shots to hit Kiro's with. Kiro's, as you can see, he's a smaller fighter. He's throwing he's th he's throwing what he feels that he can get through. And the most effective punches for Kiro's is those hooking punch hooking hooking the hooking punches. And getting back to what you just said about Dylan not sitting down, he's in shape, Corey. Round six begins in this eight-round affair. And this is about that time, Troy, when we're going to see who's in shape. Is it the fighter in Dylan Carmen, who is a full-time boxer who knew that this fight was coming? Or can Benito Quiroz, a guy who's really been a part-time fighter throughout his career, if he could stand and trade for another three rounds with the Canadian champion. Heroes turning up the pace a little bit here at the, at the beginning of round six. Part-time fighter and also a game fighter. He's there. His only strategy that he has is going forward. 
unless Dylan changes his mindset by moving him backwards, like what he just did just now. Certainly, when he is fighting, he is in there to fight. That's right. Another uppercut on the inside from Carmen. Tough to get a lot of leverage on there and on those shots when you have a guy right on top of your chest, though. It is hard, but what you have to do is start popping shots to the body, slow this, slow this guy down. Slow heroes down. Don't just go head hunting, because that's what Dylan's doing right now. He's going head hunting. As you can see, Kiros can take a punch. Carmen said he wanted to get more in tune with his boxing skills in this fight and show the audience that he could be a slick boxer as well. And there have been times when we have seen that for flashes. But for the most part, whether Carmen is losing this fight or not, it's been Kiros who's fighting the type of fight that he wants, particularly right now. Exactly. Pin him again to open and let his hands go. That's exactly what Kiros is doing, and he knows the game plan. His game plan is only walking him down. Keep walking him down. Ho hopefully the, the bigger guy slows down and let his hands go. At this point, you do have to start thinking about the scorecards as well, and Carmen has that knockdown in the bank. But Troy, as you know, there are a lot of judges out there who just like pure raw aggression, and it's been Kiros who's been marching forward. That's right, Corey. And as the fight goes on, you can see both fighters are getting a little bit tired. They're not throwing as many punches as they, as they were. Herman trying to create a little distance here. Fires that right hand down the middle. Couple shots right at the bell from Kiros. Carmen most definitely has something to think about in these final two rounds. These two rounds that's coming up is the championship round for him. They were only going eight rounds. So this is where he needs to show and put his punches together, just like what he's doing here in the... Kiros catches him with a nice body shot, comes up to the top. This is where Carmen cannot get himself caught, is against the ropes, because that's Kiros' game plan. Pin him up against the rope and let his hands go. Troy, do you think... That's how he steals the round, Corey. Do you think that Carmen has been a little bit too comfortable on those ropes and maybe thinking that he's landing a little bit more often than he is? What I would have liked to see with, uh, with Carmen is start throwing a lot more punches. If he has it in the tank, I want to see him throw a lot more punches. Keep this guy exactly where he has him right now and let his hands go. And that's exactly what he needs to do. Again, these are very tough rounds to score as we begin uh, round seven. You can make a case for both guys in almost every single round, save for the one with the knockdown. Heroes now even starting to work behind a jab. We haven't seen that so far. This is more of the pace and the geography where Carmen could be successful. Carmen is successful right now because he's actually moving Kiros back, and Kiros is not walking forward. And when he has him at the distance, he's just letting his hands go. He can catch him. Pop that jab, pop that jab. That's what he has to do. Keep the smaller fighter out. Let his hands go, hit the body. It is interesting that throughout his career that the fighters who have really troubled 
Dylan Carmen have been smaller fighters, and usually they've come in a different form. The heroes have mostly been movers, guys like Silvera Luis who can use the ring a little bit. But again tonight, having difficulty what he's with a having man. What he's having difficulties is the fact that Kiros is able to push him back. Kiros is the guy with no pretty much formula where all he does is move, move forward. Keeps his hands up, goes forward. And once, hopefully he can land some of those shots that he's throwing right now, the hooking shots coming over the top. Dylan's hands are not high enough. It is interesting to watch because, of course, you and I were ringside calling the action when Dylan was walking Eric Martel back, and Eric Martel, who's six foot five, 260 pounds, but tonight Benito Quiros is the one pressing the action. But like you said, Corey, Dylan has had problems with smaller guys, and this is just one of those situations. Quiros is a smaller guy and keeps pushing him back. That's his strategy. Push him back, come over the top. This has been a better round for Carmen. Excellent combination there, but gets cracked for good measure by a left hook right at the bell.